Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're still working on foundations. Um, now we are going to do uh, HTML boilerplate. All right, so in all HTML documents have the same basic structure of or boilerplate. They need to be in place before anything useful can be done. In this lesson, we will explore the different parts of the boilerplate and see how it all fits together. So our lesson overview. This section contains a general overview of the topics you will learn in this lesson. How to write basic uh, boilerplate for an HTML document and how to open HTML documents in your browser. So creating an HTML file. To demonstrate an HTML file, a boilerplate, we will need an HTML file to work with. So create a new folder on your computer <coughs> and name it HTML boilerplate. So we're going to press command spacebar and open up the terminal. I'm going to press uh, command plus five times so that my font's larger. And then we'll start working on it from there. And I'm going to flip this over here. So we want to change directories into our desktop because I like to build things on my desktop. And we want to create a new folder. So we're going to go make dear HTML boilerplate. And now if we were to list, we'll see we've got a few different projects in here, but HTML boilerplate is now there. Uh, so create a new folder within that folder. So within that folder, we're going to go CD HTML boilerplate. And now if we go PWD, you can see we're in this one. If we list things, there's nothing there. And so within there, we're going to create a new file and name it index.html. So touch index.html. And now if we list it out, we'll see that it's there. <clears throat> You're probably already familiar with a lot of different types of files. For example, doc, PDF, and image files. To let the computer know we want to create an HTML file, we need to append the file name with .html. So that we have done, uh, as we have done when creating index.html. It is worth noting that we named our file index. We should always name the HTML file that will contain the home page of our website index.html. This is because web servers will by default look for index.html page when users land on a website. And not having one will cause big problems. Okay, so the doc type. The HTML page starts with a doc type declaration. This doc type's purpose is, a, is to tell the browser what version of HTML it should use to render the document. The latest version of HTML is HTML5, and the doc type for the version is simply exclamation point doc type HTML. The doc type for older HTML versions were a bit more complicated. For example, in HTML4, it looked like this, uh, which had a lot more in there. Uh, we probably don't even want to be using the older version of HTML, so we'll always use doc type. Open the HTML file you created earlier in your text editor and add doc type HTML to the first line. So how do we do that? Uh, we do code, and then we can press the period key. And that will open up um, our uh, Visual Studio code, which we set up in previous lessons. And so now we want to open the file there, and now we can do doc type. And I can just press Enter, and that'll auto-correct it, or auto-set it there. Now if we save that, we should be good. So HTML, after we declare doc type, we need to provide an HTML element. This is what's known as the root element of the document, meaning that every other element in the document will be descendant of it. This becomes more important later on when you learn about manipulating HTML with JavaScript. For now, just know that the HTML element should be included on every HTML document. So HTML, and I guess we're going to put the language in there of uh, EN. And enter. Cool. So the lang specifies the language of the text content in that element. The attribute is primarily used for improving accessibility of the web page. It allows assistive technologies, for example, screen readers, to adapt accordingly to the language and invoke correct pronunciation. Cool. So now there's this thing called the head element. The head element is where we put the most important meta information about our web page, the stuff required for our web page to render correctly in the browser. Inside the head, we should not use any elements that display content on the web page. Okay, cool. And so the head element should go, I believe, here. And cool. So we'll save that. The Kerasek metadata, we should always have a meta tag for the Kerasek character set encoding of the page in the head element. So in the head element, uh, care set like that. Setting the encoding is very important because it ensures that the web page will display special symbols and characters from different languages correctly in the browser. Title element. 
Uh, another element we should always include in the head, so hidden in the head, uh, is the title element. So, yeah, my useful programmer first Odin project page. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, the title element. The title element is used to give your web page a human readable title, which is displayed in our web page browser tab. If we didn't include the title element, the web page's title would look different than its file name. In our case, that would be index.html, which isn't very meaningful for users. Okay, let's describe what they're saying here. So I'm going to press Command J, and if you see, we're here. So what we can do is open that. So we can go open dash A, and I'm going to say Brave which means I'm choosing the web browser, and then I can say index.html. Brave, maybe it needs to be Brave browser. Cool. So, useful program, if you see in the, t in, the, in the tab here, that's where it's showing up. Now, if I were to comment this out by pressing Command, question mark, or backspace, and we were to refresh this, it's gonna say index.html. So, uh, search engines use this, um, to index your page, so it's important for search engine optimization, but it also just makes it look better. Uh, so now if I save that in the title, you can see that it's still up here. Uh, there are many more elements that you can go within the head HTML. However, for now, it's only crucial to know about those two we have covered here. We will introduce more elements that go into the head throughout the curriculum. Uh, back in our H H H HTML file, let's add the head element with a carrot meta set uh, title within it. This head element goes within HTML element and should always be the first element on the opening tag. Cool. So it's the first element in the opening tag. Looks like we've got it all right so far. <clears throat> now you notice here that the I've got spaces in here. That's just a... Um, it works either way. <clears throat> you could do it like that or like that. Uh, body element. The final element needed to complete the HTML boilerplate is the body element. This is where all the content will be displayed to the users will go. The text, images, links, so on. Uh, the complete, to complete the boiler part, we need to add a body element to the file. The body element also uh, goes within the HTML element as it's always used below the head element. So make sure it's not within the head element. You want it outside. Uh, viewing HTML in the browser. The HTML boilerplate and HTML file is completed at this point. So if we were to say useful programmer website uh, uh, you can drag and drop an HTML file from your text editor into the ad address bar so if you were here HTML boilerplate you could click it and drag it into your browser window um, you can find the file in your system and double click it. This will allow you to open it up. So you could also just double click it depending on what your default browser is. Uh, uh, and you can use the terminal to open it. Oh, cool. You can just say open. That's easier. Open dot index. Ah, that's even easier than this whole open dash a. But it only works that way because I have Brave set as my default browser. Uh, if my default browser weren't set to Brave, then it might open it in Safari or something like that. Using one of the methods above, open the index file we have been working on. You'll notice the screen is blank. This is because we don't have anything in our body to display. So I added something here. It looks like they want us to add H1 elements around it. So we can do that. If we save that and we come over here and refresh, we'll notice that this is going to get bigger because it has a heading element. So HTML does kind of have a little bit of font and sizing things, but it's not as robust as um, CSS. Now, if you refresh the page, you should see Hello World. Uh, we don't see Hello World because we put this there, so that's different. And we have a VS Code. It has a built-in shortcut you can use for generating all the boilerplate in one go. Please note this shortcut only works while editing a file with the .html extension or a text file with HTML language already selected. To trigger the shortcut, Delete everything on the HTML and just enter on the first line. 
Okay, so I pressed it, and now I'm just going to press Enter, and it looks like it built it really quickly. It was much faster. Useful programmer website. And then here, H1, and add it there. So now, same thing. So this is a much quicker way of doing it. Exclamation point, Enter. Uh, cool. This will bring up a couple of options. Please enter key. Oh, I wonder what the other options are. Oh, that's just easier. Hmm. Uh, you bring up a couple of options, press the enter key to choose one, and voila, you should have the boilerplate populated for you. But it's still good to know how to write boilerplate yourself because in case you find yourself using a text editor like Notepad, heaven forbid, which doesn't have the shortcut, try not to use the shortcut in your first few HTML projects so you can build some muscle memory for writing the boilerplate code. Uh, for this assignment, building your first web page video. Uh, before some... Uh, yeah. And build some muscle memory by deleting the contents of the index file and trying to write all the boilerplate again from memory. Okay, I'm not going to do that in this because I think that this is something that really early stage programmers need to do. I have committed almost all of this to memory. Uh, run your through HTML validator. Interesting. Character set, address, more options. Anyways. Cool. So let's go through the knowledge check. This section contains questions for you to check your understanding of this lesson you own. What is the purpose of the doc type declaration? It tells you what version of HTML to use. What is the HTML element? It's the one that goes, that wraps all of the content of the website. What is the purpose of the head element? It gets like metadata and brings in source elements and other files into the, uh, into the HTML file. And what is the purpose of the body element? It contains all the images, links, lists, and all the other stuff that's going to be contained in the website. Cool. And it has some, uh, additional uh, resources here, which I'm not going to go through because I kind of feel like uh, I'm very familiar with HTML and I probably don't have very good insights. I think going through it as an early stage programmer, this kind of stuff would be really interesting, but for me, it's not going to work out right now. So we'll mark this one as complete. Move on to the next level. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one.